first thing we'd like to do. The first thing we'd like to do is um, roll call. Joanne, yep. will you assist us with that? Yes, Lachey has the list in front of her. She will be doing the roll call. Please right. proceed, Lachey. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Elaine Sanchez. Here. Tamara Hopali. She will be late. Um, Nicole Rogers. Here. Jane Mack. <clears throat> Kelly Benavides. I'm here. Sorry. I my mute button was delayed. I'm here. Oh, Jane. Thank you. Okay. Uh Kelly Benavides. Shannon Bill Bray Axelrod. Here. Kiba Creer. Pamela Graham. She's I'm here. here. Thank you. Yes. Fred James. Here. Felipe Ortiz. Here. Michelle Sanders. Here. Kate Turner Whiteley. Chris Way. And that is uh, it. Chris, Chris just resigned uh, last evening. Okay. So he's no longer on our board. Okay. Just an FYI. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. The next item is public comment. Do we have any public comment? Oh, we do not. But I do want to state that I see Director Creer is joining in. So I okay, think she's just connected. But we have no public comment. Thank you. Okay. Hello, Kiba. And thank you for the... Thank you for uh, public comment information. So now we'll move on to item number two, the board action to accept proposed agenda. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Can I have a second? Second. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I got that out of order. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And before Hello? we proceed, uh, Director Holopeli has just joined. Hello, Tamar. Hi, everyone. Sorry for my delay. I just got off another call. Just Monday, Monday, Monday. Yep, it's all good. Thank you for yeah, joining thank us. Thank you. And now the next item is item number three, discussion and possible action regarding proposed nominations and election of foundation directors to serve as chair, vice chair, uh, secretary and treasurer. Um, during our last meeting, the board um, instituted new bylaws. And so now we have the position of chair, vice chair, secretary and treasurer. And the president position is for the person who potentially the foundation will hire uh, in the future. We did that with our new bylaws. Um, so that way the foundation could potentially uh, evolve. Uh, the election of the officers and directors per the bylaws of the Las Vegas Clark County Library District Foundation, all officers shall serve until the next annual meeting of the board or until their respective successors are elected and qualified. Uh, the titles again are chair, vice chair, secretary, and treasurer. And the board, the officers can choose whether or not they would also like to have a past chair if deemed necessary. That also was in the new bylaws to create more flexibility. Um, so knowing that, if you look at your agenda backup on page two, you will see uh, that the, the current directors and you will see the terms of expiration. Uh, because of the new bylaws that were adopted at the last meeting, um, everyone actually gets an ad additional time uh, on the board. Um, but for uh, information purposes, I am now on the on the district side as um, a trustee. So as soon as we do the elections, um, I will pass over my position to the person who is elected. Um, the directors do not expire in 2023. Uh, the current directors do not expire in 2023 due to the new bylaws. Are there any questions? Um, seeing none, I'm going to move forward uh, I for discussion and possible action to elect the foundation chair. 
do is there any nominations from the floor for foundation chair? Uh, I would like to make a, a, a uh, I'd like to nominate Tamar. Okay, Tamar, would you be willing to accept the chair position for the foundation? Uh, thank you, Fred. Um, I was thinking of nominating you, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what, Elaine, I would be humbled to be nominated. Um, but definitely if there are others that would like to step into this position, um, you know, I am a great leader, but I'm also a phenomenal follower. So you let me know what the foundation needs and I will be there. Okay, that's wonderful. And and I will just say that, um, well, um, if there's no one, is there anyone else that would like to run for chair? If not, I will close the nominations. And okay, so we have so far on the slate is uh, foundation chair, Tamar Hopefully, The next item would be foundation vice chair. The floor is open for vice chair. Would anybody like to take that role? See none, I would like to elect or nominate, I'm sorry, nominate uh, Shannon Bilbray Axelrod as vice chair. Shannon, would you be willing to step in that role? I would. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to run for that position? Hearing none, I will close that. So right now we have Tamar as chair, Shannon Bilbray Axelrod as vice chair. The next position will be uh, discussion and possible board action to elect a foundation secretary. Nicole, I was wondering if you would still stay in that role um, for our foundation. Um, I will continue and try my best. <laughs> You've done a great job so far. We've been very fortunate to have you. Is there anyone else that would like to run for that role? Hearing none, I'm closing that. And we put in Nicole Rogers in that, in that position. And then discussion and possible action to elect foundation treasurer. Is there a nomination from the board for treasurer? This is Jane. I nominate Fred James. Very good. There's a nomination on the floor for Fred James. Is there anyone else that would like to nominate in that role? Hearing none, I'm closing that. So uh, the voting slate is foundation ta chair, Tamar Huopoli, uh, foundation vice chair, Shannon Bilbray Axelrod, foundation secretary, Nicole Rogers, and foundation treasurer, Fred James. Can I get a motion for that nomination slate? Motion to approve. Very good. Can I get a second? Second. Is that Michelle Sanders second? Yes, it is. Oh, okay, just trying. Okay, very good. So uh, very good. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Aye. 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 Very good. Motion carries. That is our new foundation executive board. And I just want to say for the record that Tamar and to the rest of the executive members, I will always make myself available to you. So whatever you need, I am only a phone call or a text away. Congratulations on your new positions. And we are very thankful and proud to have you as executive members of the board. So thank you. Moving on to the next agenda item is a presentation from Kutak Rock LLP regarding legal, legal services for New Markets Tax Credit Project for the West Las Vegas Library that will soon be under construction. If, before we begin, this is Joanne. Barry, do you need me to stop sharing so you can share your screen? Um, no, I don't have uh, anything on my screen that I'll be sharing. Uh, I think you have both my engagement letter yes. or the QTAC Rock engagement letter. And then after that is a conflict waiver letter that both of which were presented at the, the prior board meeting. Yes, I have them up on the screen. Can everyone see? Yes, thank you, Joanne. Great, thank you. Okay, great. So um, I'd like to offer my thanks to uh, the board of directors to um, 
for permitting me to come back and uh, ask for a little bit of clarification on the requirements for authorizing um, the the chair of uh, the board of directors to uh, execute or sign uh, my engagement letter um, and the conflict waiver. Uh, again, like I mentioned before, both of these documents were presented at the prior board meeting and were voted upon. Um, and there were um, some contingencies placed on um, the authorization to be able to sign these documents. Um, and I wanted to make sure that um, those um, requirements were uh, clarified um, and presented to the board so that um, we all knew what needed to be done in order to be able to have QTAC Rock be able to represent uh, the foundation and the library district um, in this upcoming new markets tax credit transaction. Um, the two issues that um, I think were left to be resolved um, to authorize the, the signing of this um, engagement letter and the, the conflict waiver um, were the who is responsible for paying the legal fees from QTAC Rock and in what um, proportion. Um, if the library district is responsible for a portion and if the, the uh, library district foundation was responsible for a portion. And then the other contingency that I heard that was placed on the authorization was um, the negotiation of a $50,000 fee uh, to be paid from the district to the foundation. Um, each of those two issues would, um, is my understanding, would need to be with, resolved. Um, prior to authorizing uh, the the chair of um, the organization to be able to sign uh, the engagement letter and the conflict waiver. Uh, with respect to resp the responsibility to pay the QTAC Rock legal fees, um, I, I think there's probably two options uh, that could be pursued um, if, uh, because the, the current way the engagement letter is prepared, um, it indicates that the library district foundation would be responsible for paying the QTAC Rock legal fees. Um, and that's in the, the situation where this transaction does not reach closing. Um, the reason why I bring that up is um, typically with new markets tax credit transactions, um, the legal fees that are paid uh, not only to QTAC Rock, but to all participants on the transactions and their uh, respective council are paid out of the transaction closing fees. So it's um, not the foundation or the district that will be responsible for paying if this deal gets to closing, but rather the newly formed entity that we create um, to serve as the qualified borrower uh, that would be responsible for the legal fees. So the contingencies that the foundation and the district need to discuss as far as um, who should be responsible for uh, what legal fees um, are in the event this deal does not close. Um, and I can honestly tell you that on every transaction that I've um, participated on with Crescent Growth Capital, where they've put the transaction together and we've gotten to um, uh, all the parties coming to the table to um, start the transaction through term sheets and start moving towards closing. Every single deal has closed. Um, and that's um, working with Crescent Growth Capital. I think from for me, that's been between 15 and 20 yeah. days. I'll wait for that noise to stop. Brianna, you're not on mute. Brianna? I'm sorry. That's okay. Thank you. <laughs> I actually thought that was my laptop because it sounds exactly like mine. Uh, <laughs> I was panicking trying to figure it out. But anyway, um, every deal that I participated on that Crescent Growth Capital has put together has closed. So um, although there is a risk um, that uh, the legal fees may need to be paid by either the, the foundation or the district, um, I think um, that that risk is probably pr pretty low, but it is still a risk. Um, and then the other potential legal fees that may need to be paid are seven down, years down the road when this deal um, unwinds and all of the new markets participants that are brought in to participate in the deal leave the transaction. Um, 
the either the library district or the foundation would be responsible for paying for their legal fees. So that's not QTAC Rocks legal fees, but it's outside of um, my engagement. Uh, but it is a potential legal fee responsibility that I know was an issue that um, uh, at least one board member had brought up as a um, something that would need to be addressed. So the way to address those um, legal fee issues are, I, I think there's probably two options um, if the foundation doesn't want to be solely liable for them pursuant to my engagement letter. One is to arrange for an indemnification agreement uh, with the library district where the library district um, agrees to pay the legal fees um, that are incurred pursuant to this engagement um, in the event the transaction does not close. Uh, the other option is for QTAC Rock to be engaged directly by the library district instead of the foundation. So then there would be no way for the legal fees to um, come back to the foundation um, as far as their responsibility to pay because the library district would be the only entity that um, is signing the engagement letter with QTAC Rock. And then uh, that would alleviate all liability from the foundation's perspective. The other- Okay, I, oh. oh. Go ahead. Um, I was, I had a question. Um, sure. Uh, has, so Brianna, you've been involved in these conversations. Yes, correct. And what is your thought process on this? So Mr. Burns provided a great overview of what the concerns are and that there are two options. And my recommendation is that the foundation discuss these two options with the district and come to an agreement um, before the board votes on, on anything. Because really the conversation needs to be with the district as to whether or not they would agree for the to the indemnification agreement or they would rather off just be the actual client with QTIC Rock. And does that affect the new market tax credits because then the foundation is no longer involved? Does anyone know the answer to that? So that would not affect the, um, the new markets tax credit transaction because the foundation would still be involved um, playing the same role um, but they would not be responsible for paying the QTAC Rock legal fees. Um, the way that the engagement letter is drafted and would continue to be drafted if the library district were to sign it is that QTAC Rock would represent the library district, the foundation, and the newly formed entity um, in the new markets transaction because all three entities have the same end result um, that they're striving for, and that's to get the West Las Vegas um, library constructed and put into operation. So we would still be respond, we would still be representing all three of those entities, but the legal fee responsibility um, would no longer be uh, placed on the foundation. That would be the same outcome most likely if the library district and the foundation were able to come to an agreement on an indemnification agreement with the foundation still signing this engagement letter. Okay, and then do we know, um, based on our last uh, our last new market tax credit, how did the foundation and the district proceed? Because I'm sure this also came up at the last time, at our last new market tax credit, the last time we built something together. I right. would think that Fred could answer that, and I have some information too, um, that because I was in the legislature when we passed the ability for the district to do that. But Fred, do you want to take that? The, the uh, That portion of the contract, I don't remember if the foundation was liable for new market tax credit if the deal didn't go through. Uh, at that point, the foundation was not eligible to receive uh, funding at that time. And we had to change the laws up there to make it happen. So I don't know if we, there was a contract. Uh, Barry, do you remember uh, if we had a contract with the library district that uh, if, 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 you know, the end of, uh, to indemnify the library district uh, from uh, any um, fees if this deal didn't go through. I don't remember signing anything. Uh, the previous person may have signed that contract. 
Yeah, Fred, I, I can speak to that. Um, and I can tell you that there was no um, indemnification agreement signed. Um, the uh, chair of the board at the time signed the QTAC Rock, uh, the chair of the foundation board signed the QTAC Rock uh, engagement letter. Um, and with the understanding that uh, at closing, the the new newly formed entity, the new borrower would be the entity that's paying the um, legal fees. I think they got comfortable with the fact that with the track record that um, once the new markets transaction started, um, there was a high likelihood that it was going to close. And um, so there was no no one pursued an indemnification agreement in that case, in either of the first two cases. And the, the reason why I'm assuming now is that things have changed since that, since those first two new market tax credit. And um, I would feel personally, I would feel better if we were put in writing that we are identified and to, so that we're identified against any potential legal costs that we are identified by the, li the library district against all costs against the foundation. This is Brianna. I would like to add to that. The reason being is if there's any situation where the deal doesn't close based on the engagement letter as written, the foundation would be responsible for those legal fees. So even though it, the likelihood of the transaction not closing is very low, it's just a protection for the foundation. And so there's, again, there's two options. We could either enter into an indemnification agreement with the district or the district can be the client instead of the foundation. Um, but again, those discussions need to be with the district as to well, which option they would like to move forward with. Are there any questions from the board members to Fred, Barry, or even uh, F Mr. Floresto on this matter? Are there any additional questions from our board members? I have, hey, I have a couple, but I wanna wait until everybody gets their chance. Yes. Hi, this is Keepa. I think the way Barry described it is the way it went. I think I was chair at the time and, and that was the comfort level that, that we had um, with the library district. But I agree with Brianna and um, Fred that we should put something in writing. Um, I don't have a question, but I just wanted to let you know that I was the chair at the time. I think I signed it. Okay, that, no, that's good because that's good clarification. Um, I uh, agree that um, this is something that we as a board had to discuss first before we go forward with our next steps. Um, I don't know what the appetite is with the rest of the board to move forward, but it seems like the best thing for us to do is to write a letter to the district and also communicate to the district that yes, we would like to do this. Uh, we'd like to sign, but we also would like a letter um, uh, allowing for the district to indemnify the foundation should the, the deal be closed. Um, it seems like, um, you know, because we are a public, um, we operate as a public meeting, we operate as a public entity, we can't make these decisions on the fly, we have to discuss them first. Um, so in order for us not to get the cart before the horse, perhaps what we do is we um, table this and reach out to the district and then you guys are going to have to have a special meeting once you get an answer from the district. I believe the district is also having a special meeting here um, soon. Joanne, do you remember the date of the next meeting for the district? If you give me just one moment, I will pull this. Yes, that. no problem. And I'm sorry, I didn't want to put you on the spot, but I do oh, no, know- no, just take a moment. Yeah, but I do know that the district is meeting. They're having a special meeting. Perhaps this is something that we can ask to get on their agenda as well. So then that way they can say yes or no, and then we will know what to do based on that. And then we can move forward. Right. Does anybody have any comments on that? Is that, a, is that okay? Does anybody think that's all right or not all right? I, I, I'd love uh, to Madam hear. Chair, this yes. is Felipe Ortiz. Uh, yes. good, afternoon. good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> A couple of questions before we actually we table and do anything else. And I guess this is uh, either for QTAC or Mr. Martinez. Is there still money out there for new markets tax credits? And are we still a pretty good 
is your sense that we're still a pretty good opportunity for new markets kept being selected for new markets tax credits? And, and Mr. Ortiz, Ortiz this is uh, Barry Burns from QTAC Rock. That kind of actually brings up uh, the remaining issue that um, I that was presented as a, a contingency for signing the engagement letter that I, I had not quite gotten to. I was just trying to wait for the, the appropriate time to get to, and that was um, the the payment of uh, the fifty thousand dollar fee from the district to the foundation. Um, negotiation of that fee was um, specifically stated as uh, a requirement for execution of or signing of the QTEC Rock engagement letter. Um, and there were two options uh, for that fee to be paid. Uh, one was for the fee to be within the new markets tax credit structure. And the other would be for it to be directly between the library district and the foundation um, directly. Um, at, so um, our recommendation um, as a law firm would be for that fee to be paid outside of the new markets tax credit structure um, directly from the, the district to the foundation if it were to be paid. And um, for a little bit of insight as far as why and how that could potentially impact the marketability of uh, this deal to gain additional cap. Um, allocation for the new markets transaction. I was going to hand this over to um, Cameron Garner from uh, Crescent Growth Capital. Yeah, thanks, Barry. Um, Mr. Ortiz, thank you so much. It's a good question. Um, I think when we started hearing um, the, the concept floated about this fee, um, the thing that really kind of cropped up in my mind is the amount of scrutiny that I'd, I'd like to try to, to convey to you all that is that is imposed by the financing parties that that Barry mentioned specifically the new market tax credit investor that we would we would bring to the table on the district and the foundation's behalf as well as the community development entities who have the new market tax credit allocation those two outside parties um, are effectively um, proxies for the treasury to make sure that that we are all being good stewards of the new market tax credit subsidy within the confines of each transaction. Um, the Treasury doesn't directly look at every single deal unless there's an audit. Um, what they do is they, you know, they lay out the framework for the transaction, how these transactions should be put into effect um, and allow these community development entities and the new market tax credit investors to go out and find the best pro uh, projects across the country. Um, so Specific to your question, Mr. Ortiz, yes, there is a still a very high level of interest in these types of projects, specifically uh, the West Las Vegas Library, as we just saw. I just got back from Washington, D.C. Um, but, you know, returning back to the notion of this fee, every fee that's paid within the confines of the transaction um, is heavily scrutinized. Um, there are fees that are paid to these CDEs. Uh, which is a which is in consideration for the massive amount of work that they have to do putting together their application to the treasury every year um, and then administering their allocation that they receive from the treasury um, but every fee that's paid to either the sponsor or in this instance uh, the the foundation that's set up in support of the sponsor when i say the sponsor i'm meaning the district um, is is heavily scrutinized um, and especially for nonprofits. Uh, any fee that's paid is is viewed as a deduction of the subsidy that's going into the bricks and mortar. After all, the CDEs and the investor are putting their money into this transaction to to reap the benefits of the community benefits that the project is intended to create. And, and we all know all the great stuff that's going to go on in the West Las Vegas library. So when the CDEs and the investors view this fee, they're saying, all right, well, what are what are we getting for that, for a portion of that new market subsidy being carved out and paid out of the transaction that will otherwise go into the bricks and mortar and help the West Las Vegas Library get off the ground and 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 do all the great things that we know they're going to do. Uh, and so the fee within the confines of the transaction would certainly, at the very least, um, affect our marketing effort because we would have to. Part of our job is we put together a short form tax credit model. Uh, it's about 10 pages. You may have seen it. And it's it's great late at night if you need to fall asleep uh, and need something very boring to read. But um, it lays out all the transaction costs uh, associated with, with the proposed financing. Uh, 
And so when we pass that around, it would have to include that fee being paid out to the foundation because it's, it's part of the fee structure of the deal. And at the very least, a CDE would say, well, what's that fee being paid for? What are we getting or what is the transaction getting as, a res as consideration for that fee? Um, in the worst case scenario, maybe they miss it and it, come, and it comes to a head in the middle of the closing. Um, and just to kind of touch back to what Barry said at the beginning of the call, you know, we've, we've worked on at, at Creston, we've closed about $1.7 billion of worth of new market transactions. And once we have hit the starting point with all letters committed, we have never failed to close. Well, one very likely scenario is if there's a fee being paid to the foundation within the confines of this new markets transaction, the CD would at least notice it up front and might have some hesitancy uh, to putting their allocation into the transaction. And circling back to the worst case, if it comes up midstream, it could be something that you know, you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. The foundation would be have be in position to either have to forego that fee or risk losing the district that piece of allocation from that CDE. So, within the confines of the new market transaction, a fee um, at the very least would hamper our ability to go out and find additional allocation for, as we just talked about, a, a project that is very marketable. Um, project that that you know the CDE network who you know needs to kind of bless this transaction uh, would be viewing this against other similar projects around the country and so if if one of the negatives of our transaction is a is an inter-party fee being paid to the foundation that would certainly be a, a you know a drawback to the deal relative to other projects that the CDs are looking at in in, in either Nevada or in other states um, so Griffin, that's let me let me stop you right there. I, I think we're conflating stuff here. So let me see if I can keep it real simple. <clears throat> the fifty thousand dollar fee we're talking about has strictly to do if you don't get a project. Period. So if you don't get the money for new market tax credit, then you need to get paid for your services, which is fifty thousand. Is that correct? Oh no, no. So. So we were thinking of this fee um, being paid to the foundation from the district out of the new market tax credit subsidy. Okay. At least that's the way it's portrayed. You don't owe Crescent uh, anything if we go out and we market this for a year or two and can't find any allocation. That's just simply how our engagement works. Um, so what? So what is the purpose of an indemnification if if there's no harm, no foul? You couldn't find the money, or they wouldn't give us the money. What is the need for an indem indemnification? I do understand that the Call it B, the other nonprofit that's going to handle the money. The money flows through there. Everybody's paid out. The investors get their credit on their taxes. The portion comes to the district to pay for the building. And then that's where your fees are also paid out of, right? Correct. So we've done this Correct. twice before. We've done this in Mesquite and we've done that at the East Las Vegas Library. So I'm having a little bit of a hard time. How would this be different or be negligible or be viewed as a negative if we proceed in the same fashion? Yeah, the distinction is um, you wouldn't owe us at Crescent anything, but there are a number of, of uh, legal teams that represent the, in the investor's interest, the CD's interest, um, who would be billing hourly um, throughout that closing process. And in the highly unlikely event that the deal were to blow up midstream, Mid closing again, that's never happened in either Barry or or I in in deals we've worked on together. But those legal bills would come forward and and be due and payable. And so, so stop right there. This is for Floresto. So now, if I remember correctly, we paid your fees, but I believe it came. Now I sit on the library districts board. Also, we paid your fees, and it didn't come out of the money that came to us. It came out of the capital improvements budget. But at the end of the day, all that money went back into the capital improvements budget for purposes of the investors and the IRS and the taxing authorities. On paper, it just shows that the district actually paid the fees. It doesn't show that we're paying a fee for service to get the contract, which is offensive, if you will. It's like saying, well, I'll get you a doctor. You pay me a fee, right? If you, especially if you're using like Medicaid money, that's that's not probably legal too, but so I don't want well, to confuse the, everybody. But Floresto, if I may, if I may, this is Dennis Martinez. Uh -huh. um, maybe in in uh, somewhat of a response, Director Ortiz, is that in the other two transactions, 
uh, with the uh, Las Vegas Library District and the foundation, uh, we did not we did not have that fee in those transactions. Okay, fifty thousand dollar fee. This is this is something new, yeah, and very unique. And so that was not even in any of those two transactions. But those are two separate, distinct issues. One is the fee. And then yes. the other is about whether or not, if the deal doesn't close, would the foundation still be liable to cover the attorney's fees? And the answer to that is yes. Yes. So that so those are two separate issues. And I I sincerely hope that the board is, is following and we're not confusing the two. And I'd like to add something. This is Fred. Um, the, the Cameron is talking about if we uh, try to approach receiving a fee for our services for our for a convenience fee for the library district if we try to go through the new market tax credit it creates a problem everything that he just talked about is about the problem that the that he would have and that we potentially have with the new market tax credit people now if something the the second part of that questioning is if we negotiated directly with the Las Vegas Library District separately under this, indem this indemnify to indemnify us against any potential loss regarding any new market tax credit issues. Uh, that's a separate contract between the loss, between the foundation and the library district. And right. it has nothing to do with the, um, and correct me, Cameron, has nothing to do with that contract would have nothing to do with the new market tax credit, unless something has come up since the last time we talked. Cameron? That all sounds correct. Fair yeah. and, and Fred, just a, a comment on that also, that's absolutely correct. And also a reason why that fee or negotiation of that fee should not be uh, added to the new markets tax credit um, um, engagement letter that QTAC Rock has um, in front of the foundation board. And that's because the district and the foundation would be viewed as parties um, directly in, uh, opposite each other in that transaction. And QTAC Rock would have a legal conflict um, in representing both parties against each other. So we would not be able to include that fee negotiation in our engagement letter, just in case um, anybody wanted, uh, just to clarify that QTAC Rock would not be part of that negotiation. Thank you for Madam, that clarification. Madam Chair, real quick. Uh, so having heard that, I, I I like the idea of indemnification, number one, but I think the $50,000 fee has to do with the library district uh, because at the end of the day, on a $31 million deal, that's really negligible. So that's something that should come to that board to deal with. And council, uh, I oh, thank you for those comments. Council, do you agree with that, Brianna? I. They yes, so the foundation and the district need to have a discussion. So there's two discussions that need to be had with the district. One has to do with how the attorney fees will be paid if the transaction does not close. And the second conversation is the fifty thousand dollar convenience fee that is being discussed right now. Both of those need to be addressed with the district before you move forward. Okay, so hey, council legal counsel. Oh, sorry. Point, please. Uh, I wanted to make sure that we were identified against anything of the new market tax credit, not just not just uh, if it doesn't close, because things could happen seven years down the road. We have a seven year obligation up under this new market tax credit. Uh, we're having two that's going to close. If I'm correct, it's next year, I think next July and next um, December, uh, Fresco. I'm not quite sure about the dates anymore. I think they close next year, the current new market tax credit. This is Floresto, CFO for the Library District. Barry Cameron, I think you guys have a good idea of the dates and when those two deals will wind down. Yeah, the East Las Vegas Library, I've got the model open here, Barry, that closed, looks like, bear with me. It's in 2020. 2024, 2025. So yes. it'd be on, it would have, okay. So 
It unwind, the first deal unwinds July 25th of 2024. So we'll want to mark that on our calendars. Um, and then the Mesquite transaction ferry, I believe, closed in 2017. I don't know if you recall, but that would put this, it's, I'm sorry, uh, 2019. Um, so that would put its unwind two years after, roughly in 2026. But we can we can provide the board with those dates. And and uh, Cameron and 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 to the board members, um, I wanted to make sure that we had a, a, an indemn a, we're indemnified through that whole period and the rest of those other two contracts that we did not sign uh, an, an indemnification for it. So my my deal is that. It's an open-ended that we're indemnified through any new market te tax uh, issues until these seven years are closed out. Okay, so what I'm hearing is that we need to speak with the district before we proceed and that there are two separate matters. One yeah. is a, 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 a fee uh, to utilize foundation services. Uh, the other is to indemnify the foundation should an unfortunate or unforeseeable incident occur with the construction of the West Las Vegas library, where as we, it just wouldn't somehow the, the deal would not complete. Um, council, would, what do you suggest? Oh, go ahead. That would, I, I, I think it needs to be open-ended to anything that deals with new market tax credit instead of just the West Las Vegas, because we still have two um, uh, new market tax credit uh, deals until what we just talked about, until those seems dates. Like, it seems like there's years. one. It seems like there's one deal that's still outstanding. Is that it's, correct? It's or? two. It's two. Okay. It's, it's, both, two. it's both the um, East Las Vegas and Mesquite. And I think he said it was in 2024 and 2025 is when they closed. And I'm saying that it should be that we are identified for those for the period through those, uh, uh, including those those uh, two um, new market tax credit, previous new market tax credit, which we don't have this same type of uh, coverage. Okay, so Matter, knowing Matter, knowing yes yes sorry, please. One last question. Uh, I don't want this linger to, to linger till September because there is a sense of urgency. The economy is changing. Politics are changing. For QTAC, how, how quickly do you need an answer? Um, actually, my, um, my work begins in earnest as soon as uh, Crescent Growth Capital is able to garner uh, participation from the other new markets uh, participants, the investor and the community development entity. So as soon as they're able to, to do that, that's when I would need to have um, the engagement letter signed. Yeah, and I can, I can put a little bit of a finer point on that. Um, there's a couple CDs that we've talked to about this deal who were really kind of supportive of it. Um, and I would hope that by uh, July or early August, we would have an LOI or two to bring forward for, for the district and foundation's review and approval, uh, which would kick Barry into, uh, into gear to get started with his work. This is Thanks, Elaine Chris. Sanchez. I, I just want to say that we could we can definitely do this by July or August. Uh, we would have to schedule a special meeting with the district separately. And then also we would have, we, the foundation would have to have a special meeting. So then that way they could just approve it. But I do believe that there are offline conversations that need to happen very soon in order to get that done. Um, I, I have a question for council. Council, knowing that these are the requirements that are needed um, in order to uh, have a discussion with the district, what do you suggest as far as uh, moving forward? It, you know, I, I, I don't think, um, I'd like your opinion first. This is Brianna Martinez. When you say moving forward, what exactly are you referring to with the engagement letter? Ye yes, I'm talking about the engagement letter. It seems to me that you're saying we should not sign the engagement letter until we talk to the district. Is is that, I, that's what I thought you had said. Yes, is that correct? that's absolutely okay. correct. Okay. Don't sign the engagement letter until we have these discussions with the district. And then of course, once we have the discussions with the district, we will need to have a meeting with our board. Um, 
to confirm how we're moving forward. The district will potentially need to have a meeting as well. Okay, so uh, I, yes, please, who's that? Sanchez, it's Joanne Pervetti. Oh, uh, hi, Joanne. The next, the next board meeting is July 13th for the Board of Trustees. Thank that you. is the so, regular board meeting. And that's more than enough time to get this done. There, that's more than enough time to have a conversation with the district. Hopefully they would put this on their agenda. They would tell us yes or no. And then we, the foundation would know, the foundation board members would know what to do. So thank you. So July 13th. So Madam Chair, in abundance of caution, can we set up another a meeting? We can always cancel it or whoever. Yes. Uh, hey, Tamar, yes. Uh, ask for another meeting scheduled and cancel it uh, if we don't need and to. And maybe you guys can schedule it the day after the, the district's meeting. And that would put you, you know, either whatever. Let's see here. Let me look. I'm just looking. That would be if, if it's you said, Joanne, it's July 12th or 13th? July 13th. July 13th. So potentially you guys can meet on the 14th. Have the foundation members talk to the district members prior to that. Just at least to let them communicate, you know, uh, what the issue is. And then and then. Put that on the agenda for your next meeting for your next special meeting does that sound agreeable are there any other questions or comments from the board that sounds agreeable can i just ask a clarification because sure absolutely so this is uh nicole rogers um the clarification is essentially the qtac rock we're fine with everything it's just what we're dealing with on the district side correct like there's no real issue here. We're essentially moving forward. We just want to protect ourselves on the district side. Is that where this is? Yes, all just to just to protect ourselves in the rarity, like very, very right. um, you know, slim position that the deal doesn't close. Then we, the foundation, would be liable or responsible for the attorney's fees. And that's right. because all three of us, three of us with the new form, that's because all three of us would be the clientele. And so all three of us would be responsible. And we are trying to make sure that that doesn't happen because we are the medium which the money goes through. And so we just want to protect ourselves. Correct? Correct. Okay. And as the medium of the money going through, we really do not get any particular benefit from it. Um, basically, I'm saying due to the relationship that we've had over the last couple of years, uh, the relationship we had in the beginning was totally different than it is now. I think that uh, we're working toward to becoming a fully self-funded and a fully self-foundation. Um, in order to do that, we need to start making sure that we understand the legal side of every type of mm -hmm. uh, situation that we get into and not just entered into these legal uh these things that could come back on us in the future so um my my deal is that when we do talk to the library district that we do get in that agreement that we're identified from all issues regarding new market tax credit and not just the west las vegas and that would include the East Las Vegas and the Mesquite Library, because we still have several years on something that could go wrong on those particular projects. Got so that I make a I make a motion on the floor to table this item uh, that we uh, table this item and communicate to the library district that we would like to have you know, the, the executive board of the foundation would have some kind of meeting and potentially also a letter explaining uh, what we would like. So that way you can get this done by, you know, July, July 14th, July 15th. And all this is a recommendation by our council. I'm just, I'm just thinking that we should follow council's recommendation. And this is Fred. I, I totally agree. And um, Trustee Sanchez, so when we do the motion, can we confirm that the foundation board would like a special meeting on July 14th and I'll send a doodle poll out to get yes. the times? Okay. Yes. Uh, to all the board sure. members, is that is that okay for you guys? July 14th on a Friday? That would be the day after 
mm-hmm. the district's meeting on the 13th, if that'll work for you guys. And it will all be, I, I, I would, this would all be electronic. This would be through Zoom. Correct. This would not require people to, sh- you know, show up physically. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Why don't, why don't we do that? There's a motion on the floor to um, uh, table this item and to speak to the district about the uh, agreement uh, there's two separate issues. One is the indemn. We will talk to the district about the indemnification, and we will talk about the fee. Separate. Those are separate issues, and see if they can get that on their agenda meeting for July. And then we we'll be able to um, hopefully uh, have next steps for the the 14th of July. All those in favor? Can I have a motion Second. on the floor? Okay, great. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Okay. And thank you so much for that. We really appreciate it. Uh, Are there any other uh, public comments? Uh, Trustee Sanchez, this is Joanne Prevetti. Before we get to the public comments, I just wanted to get back to the elections so that we have everyone properly listed on our website. Uh, you stated that the expiration dates for, that we had on the agenda are no longer in place. And is it everyone is now expiring in 2024? Yes, you have. Actually, there's some. Yes, I have to. I'm not in town right now, so it's mm-hmm. on my um, computer. But yes, okay. people are not expiring until 2024. Correct. Right. And then we'll remove Chris Way due to the resignation. And then Correct. Director Ortiz is uh, listed for March of 2024. Will he be extended to June of 2024? I believe so, yes. Okay, we just want to make sure we Mm -hmm. have everything appropriate posted Mm -hmm. for everyone. So thank you for that clarification. I have Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And then, um, let's see here. Okay, knowing that, we'll move on to the next item of public comment. Topics raised under this item cannot be acted upon until the notice of provisions of the open meeting law have been met. Do we have anyone for public comment? Uh, this is Joanne Pervetti. We do not have any public comment. Very good. Okay. And seeing none, uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. All right. Can I get a second? Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. I want to tell everyone, thank you so much for your input today. Um, I, I have It's been an honor to be serving on the foundation board with you all. And thank you so much. Thank you so much. And everyone have a great June. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. And happy belated birthday, Kelly. Bye. Bye. Happy birthday. Thank you.